How many times do we get a pop-up screen in the EMR electronic medical record when ordering an antibiotic warning us about an allergy to the same or related family of antibiotics and whether to proceed or cancel our order? Or sometimes our nurse or pharmacist calls us for the same issue. This is a commonly encountered inpatient and outpatient issue and today I'm going to teach you how to respond to such pop-up screens or questions regarding antibiotics allergies. Before we start, make sure to check all the videos in the antibiotics playlist we have on the channel a link to the playlist is provided in the description field drug reactions in general including antibiotics are divided into four categories first non-allergic reactions which are side effects rather than allergic reactions symptoms like diarrhea vomiting feeling sick to my stomach or sometimes vaginitis after an antibiotic use are all considered side effects rather than allergic reactions the second type is the immediate ige mediated allergic reactions which include reactions like urticaria bronchospasm anaphylaxis angioedema laryngeal edema or hypotension the third type is the mild reactions but without the features of immediate allergic IgE mediated reactions we just mentioned. These patients may develop a skin rash with or without itching or sometimes they describe isolated sneezing or itching in the eyes. The risk of developing serious IgE mediated reactions in these patients is really minimal. And the fourth type is the delayed type of serious allergic reactions. These reactions develop days to weeks after taking the antibiotics or the medications and include Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, Drist syndrome, drug reaction with isonophilia and systemic symptoms, serum sickness, drug-induced cytopenias like thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, neutropenia and granulocytosis, and drug-induced organ damage which includes acute interstitial nephritis and drug-induced hepatitis. Now from the get-go, side effects are not a contraindication to given the antibiotics. Although these side effects may happen again when we give the same antibiotic, symptomatic management for such side effects can be provided if needed. Now, let me show you how we get a quick high yield antibiotic allergy history when we need that. First, ask if the patient has ever received the antibiotic or not. Some patients list a specific antibiotic in their allergy just because someone in the family is allergic to it, but they never received it in their lifetime. Antibiotic allergy is not a heritable trait, so a family history of a specific antibiotic allergy is not a contraindication to receiving that antibiotics. If the patient has received the antibiotic, we ask when was the last time? Some mild allergic reaction disappear after five to 10 years. So someone described a penicillin allergy as a child may have lost their immune response and it is not a bad idea to give it a trial dose. This applies to mainly the mild allergic reactions we explained earlier, specifically talking about isolated skin rash, sneezing, runny nose, or itchy eyes. The question about the last time the antibiotic was received should be followed by a question about the kind of reaction experience. Now, practically a lot of patients won't recall exactly what kind of allergic reactions they've had. In such a case, asking about the possible allergy symptoms can provide important clues about previous reactions. So ask about a skin rash and try to differentiate between rash from drug eruptions and a rash from urticaria. In urticaria, the rash is intensely pruritic, raised with red plaques, that appear and resolve within hours. This is a more serious reaction compared to the mild skin eruption that can be diffused or localized, don't resolve quickly, prioritis may or may not present, and if present, is not as intense as urticaria. Ask about swelling of their lips, tongues indicating possible previous angioedema. Ask them if they had any difficulty breathing, wheezing, chest tightness, or repetitive dry cough indicating a possible bronchospasm. Was there any throat tightness or change in voice quality indicating a possible laryngeal edema. Also ask about any severe skin reaction causing the patient's skin to fall off, any joint swellings and pain, that they have any issues with their blood count, or if they had any issues with their kidneys or liver from the antibiotics. All these signs and symptoms may indicate a delayed type of serious allergic reaction. And of course, ask if they've had any treatment for their allergy, if they needed to be given any medications or admitted to the hospital because of that. Now, after obtaining this history, we can classify the patient reactions according to the four categories we mentioned earlier. 
Now, some patients will not remember anything but insist they are allergic to the antibiotics. So those, I usually put them in the mild reactions but without features of serious IgA mediated reaction category. Okay, let's take a break here and let me run some quick facts that are very relevant to our topic today. Beta-lactam allergy is the most common antibiotic allergy in practice simply because they are the most commonly used. The beta-lactam family includes penicillin, cephalosporins, carbapenems, and monobactams, as true now. Penicillin cross-reactivity is thought to be up to 10% with the first and second generation cephalosporins, although, again, this number seems overestimated. On the other hand, cross-reactivity dropped to almost 2 to 3% with third, fourth, and fifth generation cephalosporins. The same applies to carbapenems. They have very low cross-reactivity with penicillin. There is no clinically significant cross-reactivity between penicillin and astronam. Bactrim trimethoprim slash sulfamethoxazole has sulfa, but cross-reactivity with non-antibiotic sulfonamides like loop and thiazide diuretics is extremely low. So don't avoid using one because of an allergy to the other. Cross-reactivity between different quinolones has been demonstrated, especially with IgE-mediated reactions. The same applies to microlides, aminoglycosides, and tetracyclines. And I'm not sure if you heard about multiple drug allergy syndrome. It is applied to patients who report hypersensitivity reactions to two or more classes of medications. And definitely you will see these patients in practice. Let's go back to the studio. Okay, I'm back here now, and let me give you some real life clinical scenarios and show you how to handle antibiotic allergy questions and what to do next based on what we learned so far. There are two options here. First, go and find out more about this allergy as we explained earlier. And second, which is the easiest option, is to discontinue piperacillin slash tazobactam and order an equally effective unrelated antibiotic. So if you are tired, exhausted, or too busy to obtain more history, just do that. In this case, we discontinued piperacillin slash tazobactam and started the patient on a combination of IV levofloxacin and metronidazole instead. Both antibiotics are unrelated to penicillin. Of course, the easy way is to use an equally effective unrelated antibiotics. Astronam or Azactam would be a perfect choice. Despite belonging to the beta-lactam family, it has no cross-reactivity with penicillins. It has a pure, excellent gram-negative coverage. In this case, we wanted to give the patient IV citrixone. The cross-reactivity between penicillin and third, fourth, and fifth generation cephalosporin is around two to three percent. So it's really low, but still exists. So we asked the patient about her penicillin allergy. She didn't remember what happened and whether she needed a specific treatment for or not, but was told she had the reaction as a child more than 30 years ago. We felt probably was a mild reaction, if anything, and the fact it's been more than 30 years since she received the penicillin, we decided to proceed with IV ceftriaxone with close clinical monitoring when giving the first dose. She tolerated it very well without any reaction. So mild reactions like isolated skin rash, itchy eyes, or sneezing without any associated serious reactions or serious IgA-mediated reactions. Again, we mentioned those urticaria, angioedema, bronchospasm, laryngeal edema, anaphylaxis, or hypotension carry a very small risk of progressing to a serious IgE-mediated reaction. In these patients, it's safe to give third, fourth, and fifth generation cephalosporins. Now, a couple of days later, her culture finalized urine culture as ESBL-producing Klebsiella pneumonia, which was resistant, of course, to ceftriaxone. As we explained in a previous video, carbapenems are the drug of choice for such infections. Was it safe to give a carbapenem to this patient at the time or not? Absolutely. It is, if it is safe to give cephalosporin, then it is safe to give a carbapenem. Patient received meropenem without any complication. And this applied to all carbapenems. Of 
course, I will not give cephalexin without more information about the skin rash. Cephalexin is a first generation cephalosporin and the cross reactivity with penicillin can reach up to 10%. And upon further questioning, the patient reported that he received amoxicillin a few months earlier where he developed intensely pruritic skin lesions. He visited a local urgent care where he was giving some treatments and those lesions disappeared later that evening. So he's clearly describing urticarial reaction from amoxicillin, which is really a serious IgE mediated reaction. These patients have a higher risk of developing more serious IgMD reaction like angioedema, hypotension, anaphylaxis, etc. if they receive penicillin again. So cephalexin or other first or second generation cephalosporins can cause the same issue. The risk is less with third, fourth and fifth generation cephalosporin but it's still there. Same applies to carbapenems. So it's better in such case to look and search for an equally effective and related oral antibiotic to treat the patient's cellulitis. So you can think of clindamycin, trimethoprim slash sulfamethoxazole, doxycycline, linezolid, etc. All these antibiotics can be used. They are unrelated to penicillin. This patient was discharged on oral clindamycin. So with a history of IgA mediated reactions, avoid all related antibiotics regardless of how low the cross reactivity is. If penicillin or related antibiotic is required, consult infectious disease, consult an allergist because um, they may need to do a test dosing and desensitization if it's extremely necessary to give penicillin. Is levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin still a valid option here because of her penicillin allergy? Because some may say she's just finished a levofloxacin course and developed UTI while on it, so unlikely to be effective. As trionam or azactam would be a great choice for this patient, especially if we don't have the time or energy to gather more information from the patient about her penicillin allergy. In this case, we did ask the patient about her penicillin allergy, but she didn't know much. She grew up with penicillin listed as one of her allergy and doesn't recall receiving it or what kind of reaction she's had. So clearly she didn't have any serious IgA mediated reactions or delayed type of reaction and we felt very comfortable to start IV ciftriaxone. The patient improved significantly, her WBC improved to 8 and was ready for discharge on day 3. Urine culture showed E. coli that was sensitive to, to ciftriaxone and quinolones. Would you still consider discharging her on oral levofloxacin or ciprofloxacin? Remember, this patient was leukopenic on admission and one of the possibilities is that this could be related to levofloxacin use as a delayed allergic reaction because her WBC improved once we stopped levofloxacin. Although in clinical practice, it's very hard to rule in or out this possibility at the time. We decided against using quinolones. We asked the patient to refrain from taking any quinolones and we did document a quinolones allergy explaining that it caused cytopenia in her chart. So whenever a serious delayed type allergic reaction is suspected, avoid the antibiotic and any related antibiotics. Just pick an equally effective and related antibiotics. So now we avoid antibiotics or any related antibiotics in these cases. If there is a serious IgE mediated reaction or a delayed type serious allergic reaction. So with serious penicillin allergies, avoid cephalosporins and carbapenems. Okay to use astronam or unrelated antibiotics like clindamycin, tetracycline, Bactrim, quinolones, vancomycin, linezolid, etc. And for serious allergic reaction with the quinolones, we avoid all the quinolones. Same applies for macrolides or macrolides tetracycline or amino glycide or any related family of antibiotics. Now, for sulfas, the cross-reactivity between antibiotic sulfa and non-antibiotic sulfa is extremely low. So don't avoid one because of an allergy to the other. Example of non-antibiotic sulfas are loop and thiazide diuretics, which commonly used in practice. So don't avoid using furosemide or HCTZ if serious allergy to trimethoprim slash sulfamethoxazole or Bactrim and vice versa. In the end, if you found this video useful, give it a like, share it with your colleagues, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are new here. 
Thanks for watching.